Oscar Piastri was once infamously an Alpine reserve driver until... Um... McLaren snooped him up and he's currently flourishing in papaya whilst the French are a few laps off the pace. So that got me thinking, who are all the... Starting off we have the King of the Pose, George Russell. Russell appeared for Force India in two free practice sessions at the end of 2017 at Brazil and Abu Dhabi. Seems odd seeing him in pink overalls. This Force India was flipping fast and finished fourth in the Constructors' Championship that year. Russell ended up P12 and P11 in these FP1 outings, which is a strong performance. He sat in for Esteban Ocon in Abu Dhabi, who he himself drove for Lotus at the very same circuit a few years before in 2014 as a reserve driver too. Ocon had the pleasure of driving the hands down ugliest car to ever grace this planet. What is that? Esteban nursed this thing to P16 in FP1, just behind his teammate, the Venezuelan king, Pastor Maldonado. Ocon was not a Mercedes Junior yet, but was saved from this monstrosity of a car by the German outfit the following year. He ended up making his full F1 debut in 2016, the year where Charles Leclerc became reserve driver for Haas. As we all know, Haas and Ferrari have a stronger bond than Logan Sargent and the Wall, so this was no problem at all to put together, as Leclerc was a highly rated Ferrari Junior. Can you see the similarities? Leclerc took part in four FP sessions, finishing 18th, 16th, 17th and 21st respectively. This all turned out to be great work experience for the young Monegasque, as you can see where he is today. It is well known that Charles Leclerc is the godson of Jules Bianchi, who was the Force India test and reserve driver for the 2012 season. Bianchi was loaned out from Ferrari to compete in nine free practice sessions that year. This was the norm back then, rather than just the two a year the teams kindly dish out to their reserve drivers nowadays. Jules showed strong pace throughout the season. This was all great preparation to get a full-time race seat at Marussia in 2013. We tragically lost Bianchi a few years later, a rapid driver who was always tipped as the future of Ferrari, something that couldn't always be said for Antonio Giovinazzi. A Ferrari junior driver also, Giovinazzi was a Haas reserve in 2017 and took part in seven FP1 sessions. If you didn't believe the Haas-Ferrari partnership was a thing, then you best believe it now. Britain, Hungary, Singapore, Malaysia, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi could either be the tour locations for Taylor Swift or it could be the free practice sessions Giovinazzi took part in. He did eventually get an F1 seat at Alfa Romeo in 2019 but never really impressed enough to get the Ferrari seat. However, it doesn't end there. You may not remember that he was a Haas reserve driver again in 2022. That's because he took part in one FP1 session at Austin and well he crashed the car after four laps. Giovinazzi partnered Mick Schumacher briefly during that practice session. Mick himself was once a reserve driver for Alfa Romeo in 2020 and took part in what? Zero FP1 sessions for them that year. He and fellow Ferrari junior Callum Eilot were due to take part in FP1 at the Nürburgring for Alfa Romeo and Haas respectively. This was until the German skies opened up and ruined any chance of any track action that day. This is exactly why they don't race in Europe during the winter and autumn months. Mick did drive for Haas full time though the following year. Mick would have many backmarker battles with the Williams of Nicholas Latifi in Formula 1. Latifi became the Force India Test and Reserve driver in 2018, resulting in him participating in six FP1 sessions for the team that year. However, the team was saved from administration by Canadian gazillionaire Lawrence Stroll that year. Lawrence then wanted to have a Canadian driver in his team, so he humbly picked his son Lance over Latifi. Perhaps the Discrimination Act wasn't exactly enforced entirely here. Latifi would go on to become Test and Reserve driver at Williams, and as they say, the rest is history. I wanted to include some honourable mentions in this video with drivers such as the current managing director of F1 Academy, Susie Wolf, for Williams in 2014 and 15, Formula E driver Robin Freins for Caterham in 2014, Formula 2 legend Artem Markov for Renault in 2018, and one of the worst Formula 2 drivers of all time, Sean Gilal for Toro Rosso in 2017 and 18. So thanks everyone so much for watching. Wouldn't it actually just be like really nice if you could all hit like and subscribe on this video, please. So I'll catch you all later.